<laughs> and th there was a case where uh, Arturo Beltran Leiva, one, the head of the Beltran Leiva uh, golf cartel, uh, drug cartel, uh, he, uh, he was executed by the Mexican Marines, and the, uh, the Mexican uh, television uh, made it a point to name, to give the names of the Marines that had also died during that confrontation. And during the the, uh, the funeral of, the, of one of the Marines that had died, uh, uh, the family of, of this uh, drug uh, drug cartel or leader, uh, you know, they shot up the uh, they they fired randomly into the into the funeral home and they killed uh, some of the family of, of that Marine that had you know given his life for for you know for his, for his country. And that's one of the reasons they they covered the face. I think it's, I know it's my prejudice, but my prejudice is against, I mean, uh, the Lone Ranger side. My prejudice is against the guy who doesn't show his face, but I, I admire the way you show the little bit that you show of your face is sympathetic. But the, there the, was mass, a, the mass, the mass, the mass. There's a wonderful painter and critic, Frank Levine, in New Mexico, who did a wonderful uh, article and review of Bobby Roberto in which he described these, this body of work and uh, in English and I thought I could find the quote. Mm -hmm. But the quote is essentially that, um, and this points to Rigoberto's Baroque underpinnings also. If you look at the chiaroscuro, and the, the often irrational, almost irrational light mm -hmm. that animates these characters, coming from multiple viewpoints and multiple perspectives, which is very Baroque. Mm -hmm. You know, very often in Baroque yeah. painting. It's a stage lighting. It's not, yes. it's not right. one specific light source. There's mm -hmm. many light sources illuminating the characters according to how they fit in the composition. Right. It's halo mm -hmm. made you know, less literal. Mm -hmm. And Levine's reading of that, which I think is very accurate, is that, okay, so the guys, you know, with the balaclavas are lit, and so is this weeping woman. They're both children of God. Mm -hmm. He says, I think he says something like, even uh, drug traffickers and hitmen are the children, the children of God. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Wall Street bankers. <laughs> Theoretically. Yeah, yeah. We're, still, we're still deciding on that. <laughs> yeah. Two questions. One is, as with a painting, that why do we choose to put two men playing instruments? I mean, that doesn't sound real. That doesn't look realistic. It's not a scene that accompanies music. We're kind of a social event. And the second one, would your style be kind of me, uh, a neo-baroque? I mean, what, how, how do you want your work itself to be uh, identified as? Well, the, you know, to the second question first, uh, uh, I got no problem with it being referred to neoclassical, like neo-neoclassical or neo-baroque. Uh, you know, I had a friend that he made a video of my work and he put it on YouTube and he called it Baroque on the Border and that's how I, every time I've shown this body of work, I think it's kind of catchy and it's good. Like people identify with my name and with the work that I'm doing. Uh, but it could be uh, the social realism on the border also. Uh, uh, what was the first question? It's like the about line music oh, musicians. The thing about the musicians, uh, have you ever been to like Laredo or Reynosa or Brownville or El Paso? When, when you're in Tapa. Uh, or to Juarez, if you're, if you're on the Mexican side, in any of those border towns, and I think it, I've never been to Tijuana, but uh, uh, JP could, you know, could be, be witness to this. Uh, uh, there's a lot of street musicians. Uh, so if you're, if you're going to a cantina or a, a restaurant, they'll come in and they'll offer to uh, you know, sing a song for you. Uh, and it, it's also about the, you know, the music uh, that is from the border. Uh, I grew up listening to uh, corridos from New Mexican ballads, uh, and those you know those stories are those that music uh, tells a story and has a narrative. Uh, so I found that in common with Baroque art that you know Baroque and also High Renaissance art. Uh, you know the really great art, what I consider really great art has uh, the, you know has a very strong you know narrative you know story 
telling uh, uh, quality or tradition to it. Uh, so uh, that is why the musicians are in that painting. And so it, the whole thing. Probably a reference that, to the storytelling as opposed to, because they're from, I mean, you would have. They're also narco corridos. Yeah. Uh, corrido is a huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it is. A corrido is a storytelling, it's a musical storytelling. And, right, and, and so if um, something happens, like a horrific event happens, a lot of the uh, stories of the, yeah. the corrido will record that, that event. Yeah. The, the Mexican Revolution was um, told through corridos, you know, before mass media was, or when it was mass media was interrupted in Mexico. But well, I was also going to ask you that as far as the music, you should listen about the music is that. Uh, you know how you have certain, certain uh, cartels now. They certain cartels are, 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 can only, you can only play certain music by a certain band, yeah. by a certain cartel. Mm -hmm. If another cartel hears you playing that band music, they'll shoot. Yeah. yeah. And cartels and cartel leaders are commissioning corridos about certain gunfights or. Themselves. Yeah, yeah. I'm such a badass, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Ricardo Kingsley at the, at the panel at the Talento Bilingue, Bilingue was, was talking about, because he, you know, he spent, of course, he's done a lot of research in, uh, in Ciudad Juarez where you've got two different cartels, you know, doing the, you know, doing the fighting, you know, the Sinaloa cartel and the Juarez cartel. And their songs are, he was mentioning that their songs that are commissioned by, you know, by the Juarez or the Sinaloa cartel, so, if, you know, when the police arrived and they saw, you know, a victim and the music that was playing on the, on the radio, they, if the, the song spoke about uh, the power of the Sinaloa cartel, it meant that the Sinaloa had, you know, killed that one person. Mm -hmm. And if it was singing a, a song about the Juarez cartel, that the Juarez cartel had executed that person. So, it, you know, it's, it's music that, that uh, it's really important within, you know, this, you know, this conflict. And there are musicians commenting on it as social commentators as well. Uh, Tigas del Norte, if you, if you don't know them, they're huge superstars of Tacano and Conjunto music. They had a wonderful song, Las Mujeres de Juarez, about, uh, you probably know, there were several thousand women who went missing from Juarez, from the Maquiladoras, over the course of about 15 years. And there's, there, it's still happening, so it hasn't stopped. The women are still you know, being taken um, and killed. So yeah, this is an ongoing thing. Well, the the, the city government of Juarez took a really dim view of this song because the song directly says this is a national shame. This is a that's a direct translation. This is a national shame. This is something that's being ignored. The rights of these women you know, are being trampled, and murders happening on a large scale. Mm -hmm. So they're also, while there are musicians, the, there are narco corridos, and then there are, you know, justicia corridos. One of the things that I find really interesting about your work, when I was looking at it, I, I came to the conclusion that the, the idea of victim, right, is very clear with the, the people I'm looking at, but I don't see them as being necessarily the participants. I see them as being the witness of this, as though they themselves have heard the stories, they themselves know what has happened, and it's almost like in a theater play of it being um, acted out. Uh, and, and, and I guess the reason I'm saying that is, is that I don't necessarily feel or believe that the person holding the gun in real life, is, does that? That it's somebody else that uh, he he's internalized it. I mean, it's it's just kind of like my own little kind of yeah, thing he going on. Has I, no, no, no. What I'm saying is that is what you, you're talking about here is is it's a it's a corrido, right? And it's the song being played out and sung out, and and the people that are being affected by it the most and hurt by it. The 